slightly nervous. Um, I'm coming from one of the most beautiful churches along the Carlow Wicklow border. This is Aghold, or it's got a few different names. Locally, it could be called a howl, which is slightly closer to the Irish name, which I think would have been Aghaula, and that meant um, the apple tree or the apple tree lane. Now, um, if you're from the area, you'll know that the local pub is called the Crab Lane and it probably has the same name. So it's, uh, it is a beautiful name, uh, very important to the area. Now, Aghold, it's an incredible church. It's, um, it's basically had its history lost in many ways. So Aghold, it was built by St Finian, who is known as St Finian of Clonard, because he later built a very famous monastery, which basically became probably the first um, monastic school in Ireland and certainly one of the most important. It was where the saints known as the Twelve Apostles of Ireland were all trained. And um, so the likes of Brendan the Navigator, St Canis, um, I think St. Ruahan of Laura and Tipperary was there. Sometimes St. Kieran of Ser Kieran, he's lumped in there as well. These are all very significant names in different localities throughout Ireland, and they all trained under St. Finian. But his first church was here in Aghold. Now, he spent 16 years in Aghold when an angel came to him and said, this is not the place where you will uh, be resurrected. So that basically meant this is not the place you will die and be buried. So he needed to move a little bit further and he went up to Mead and built his university in Clonard. Um, I called, you're going to see, uh, while it is quite a small church, its dimensions are actually exactly what was required for a cathedral in those days. So in the Book of Armagh, I think it is, and I'll double check it, it's 60 by 20. So that was exactly what a, a temple moor or a large church was. So that just tells you a little bit about of its significance. It has been slightly eclipsed by Clonard and there would have been an intense rivalry between two both churches. Um, many of the different churches, they would have had a cult of saints and so they would have had lots of pilgrimages to different sites that would have made them very powerful. And it turns out many would have probably went on pilgrimage to Clonard rather than Aghold, but it is still an exceptionally beautiful place. Now behind me you can see these are Romanesque style windows. The entire building probably now dates from the 1100s, but St. Finian actually died in about 549. So the original church was much, much older. And I'm going to talk you through some of the features. The 
with no mean high crosses, there are gaps in between the cross and the circle. In this, oh, it seems like they just couldn't carve that much out, so uh, they had to stay. But it is, it's spectacular. And one of the things, now, not necessarily in COVID times, but people would try to stretch their arms around the high cross, and this was meant to give them a good look, and it's called spanning the cross. Now, I'm going to show you, <laughs> just, if you have a look, no, can't do it. I'd love to because you're meant to get lots of riches if you're able to span the high cross. Um, but maybe someone, <laughs> if you've got long arms, have a go. But it is, uh, it's well worth seeing if you come to Ag Hold. This is the font at Ag Hold and it's just at the base of the high cross. Now, no trip to Ag Hold is complete without going to the font and getting a little bit of the water. Now the water was believed to be holy water. So as you can see though, it's very green, it's stagnant water so it wasn't for drinking. But people believed that if you got some of this water and you dabbed it on warts or if you put it on a rag and put it on your head, it would get rid of those warts and the rag would cure headaches. So I'll bring some home and we'll test it out and I'll get back to you on it. Now this is the Romanesque doorway into Aghold and it is very very beautiful but it comes much later in Aghold's history. So this doorway it is believed um, was sponsored by Dermot McMurray, the King of Leinster and the reason we think he may have been involved in its creation is the fact that his sister um, married the kings of this area and he was um, a great patron of the Clonard group of nuns. They were Augustinian nuns called Erosians. Now Clonard and Ag Hold were going through a period of intense rivalry and so in order to appease Ag Hold it's thought that he um, put his money into this beautiful portal and maybe even the church itself. Now it is a square doorway, so not your, your typical kind of Romanesque, um, but it has been paralleled with another beautiful portal which Dermot McMurray is associated with, that's that of Collection. And just one of the really beautiful Romanesque details is this, if you see these little dots, they're called pellets. And it's really exceptional. would let it sound out across the countryside. Now, we know that a bell is very much part of Ag Hall's history, and there is a story of the fugitive bell. Now, St. Finian, he gifted a, what was meant to be an extremely beautiful bell to Ag Hall. And as he would journey between Ag Hall and Clonard, he would listen out to the bells sounding across the, um, the, the hillsides. He would often stop with his friend Medoc just down the road in Clonmore. Now Medoc, um, he also really liked the bell and he would say to Finian, you know, why don't you um, give the bell to Clonmore? There's a lot more people who can enjoy its sound. Um, we really appreciate it. Well this um, got Finian thinking. So he decided he would in fact move the bell, but instead of giving it to Madoc, he would bring it back to Clonard with him. So he brought the bell back to Clonard and it was installed in the bell tower there. The bell ringer went up the next morning to sound the bells and he was astounded that he, the bell tower was completely empty. Meanwhile, back here in Ag Hold, the bells had returned. Um, St. Finian, he said, well, I don't know what's going on here, but he got the bell again and he brought it back. The same thing happened. Finian, he was starting to get a little bit panicked and he thought, okay, this is getting strange. So he actually changed the bell into the bell tower in Clonard and still it returned back to Aghold. 
So I called was the place it was meant to be and he left it there. Now that bell has been really significant throughout our call's history. Um, when the church here began to go into decline, we're not sure of the exact date. It's thought maybe around the Protestant Reformation. It could be a bit later under Cromwellian rule. But it was thought that um, the monks here, they were under threat, so they got some of the precious items, including the bell, and they hid it in the bog. They just dug a hole, buried it there um, to keep it safe. But it said that they never got to go back and return to get their treasures. And every seven years, the bell, which is still in the bog, rings out. I've never heard it, but I would love to. Another really important question, which this raises, that bells are incredibly important to um, Irish monasticism. And you're going to, it, hopefully, some of you will get up to the National Museum and you will see the Glendalough exhibition and you'll see all these handbells, which they, they are kind of renowned. They're, they're not specifically Irish, but they are something which is deemed incredibly important and they have found a huge amount of these very beautiful bells. But another thing Ireland is well known for is its bell towers. So the round towers of Ireland, their primary purpose, even though many would think that it was for de defence, which is quite possible as well, they were bell towers. It does beg the question, did Aghold have a bell tower or was there a belfry as part of the original church? Now I don't have an answer, but it would be lovely to find out. This is one of very interesting features in Aghold. These are called the Hollywood uh, grave slabs. They were named by archaeologist Chris Corlett and um, they were discovered in Hollywood, County Wicklow, <laughs> not LA. But we believe this is one of the early ones, so it might have been an earlier Christian um, uh, slab just because it's um, not as well designed as some of the others. Still absolutely beautiful, but some of the other slabs that you'll see here have uh, a little bit more detail on them. These uh, grave slabs, they are kind of unique to the southeast, mostly areas around Dublin, Kildare, Wicklow, into Carlow. And if you've come across any of these slabs, please send us pictures and let us know. This is a beautiful table. Uh, tomb or or you can call them altar tombs would have been the earlier ones absolutely beautiful this is a headstone with a hole in it so i'd love to know what the story is there uh, it requires a little bit more research or if you know yourself just send me a message and there's also a cross just inscribed under it now, thank you so much for watching this video um, hopefully it was okay as i say this is very much a first attempt and any advice I would be very glad of it, to be honest, and hopefully I'll see you again for another video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.